we're trying to decide whether a model is good or bad, there are several ways we can go about it. We can be constructive with our outlook, we can be negative with our outlook, or we can be the outer circle with our outlook. And today, the Warmaster Iconoclast Titan, well, let's be outer circle to it. So, what we get here is we get a melee upgrade to a Warmaster Battle Titan. Which to me is... Okay, to divert a moment. People turn around and say constantly in the comments whenever I say, hey, um, this new release is not too crash hot. You'll notice, by the way, I don't say that too often. If you actually go back and look at all the releases that have come out and my opinion on them, overall, it's very few models that actually get episodes to themselves to talk about something I don't like about them. But when I do, it's for a reason. And I try to say to people what I'm thinking and why. So that there's a fair grounding there. So that any rebuttal that occurs, they have something to go off and they understand where I'm coming from. Unfortunately, people turn around and say things like, oh, what a surprise. The outer circle doesn't like something. Well, here's how it works, bucko. I don't have to like something simply because Games Workshop releases it. That's not how the relationship works. The way the relationship works is they have to release something and then if I like it, then I go and buy it. It is not an automatic thing that, oh, well, they bought out something. Oh, that's cool. I want it. No, no, no. Not how it works at all. They have to earn my like. And this hasn't earned it. But why? Well, that's the tough question. The first thing that immediately stood out to me was the core. The core is a bit of a weird design. Either it has the graviton imploder or it has the drill. Well, it's not a, a, a graviton imploder. It's called a Krios grav imploder. So, you know, weird name. Is that a good weapon? Well, I don't know. It's got these weird, like, four little gun ports mounted around the hand. It's got the cores themselves on it. And then it has that little port which can fire out the center of the hand. Okay, that might be some use as a weapon. Then you've got the drill. Well, the drill looks really cool. The problem is, though, the drill is inset into the hand. So unless the drill comes out and extends out from the hand, well, the minute you punch into something, yes, it's going to drill into the surface, but the rest of the armor that makes up the Titan's hand is just going to butt up to the surface and the drill won't be able to go any further. It's like when you have a drill at home and you drill into a piece of timber or something. Once the the chuck, the head of the drill, hits the object, it can't go any further, no matter how powerful it is. And that's the same with this. It's a weird design, as opposed to the regular chain fists and such that you see on models, which, although comical, they don't break my immersion in the system, and that's the key here. This does break my immersion in the system. And the reason why the others get away with it is the other weapons can be swung or manoeuvred in such a way that I can see them being able to do damage. But with this one, the drill pretty much seems to sit flush with the guard of the hand. So, like I said, unless the drill somehow extends out from the hand, it's not going to help. And I mean, why would you want something like that? Drills like that are a very slow thing in reality. So you'd want it to start well out from the hand. And in fact, you probably want the whole arm to be a giant drill in a lot of ways for it to really gain best effect. So, not a huge fan of that, but it is definitely the more practical of the two weapons. Because the other weapon, that giant chainsword, is beyond silly. Uh, and again, this is coming from a game system which is all about silliness. Uh, that goes to extremes. I'm fine with going to extremes, but there is a limit to those extremes, okay? You can't just slap something on a titan and then call it a day. And in this instance, we have this giant sword, which seems to have some sort of shroud around it. Now, the shroud is just completely impractical. I, it's going to completely get in the way of anything this sword does. Not only that, the sword's teeth are moving in opposite directions to one another, so it's not going to want to bite, hold, and cut into an object. Uh, it's going to want to simultaneously kick itself out in two different directions, and the teeth are going to be fighting one another. It's a very odd way to design the weapon. Uh... It doesn't have a proper scissor motion either, so there's no benefit to be gained from that. Then you have the fact that this weird shroud that goes around the weapon is blocking it from any actual uh, ability to attack. So the only thing I can think of is that 
looking at the design of it, this perhaps works like some kind of exacto knife. You, you can retract, it can slide this guard open to expose the sword. But then if it does so, what's the point of having the sword guard on there in the first place? Because it's not guarding anything. The blades are still exposed. It's just, well, now they're, they're slightly more exposed and they have this hindrance to their own activity out of the way. Because it didn't protect it, it didn't protect the blade from damage, all it did was stop the blade from being able to penetrate. Now some might turn around and say, oh, you know, it's thousands of tons of titan, it's got a lot of mass behind it, it can drive that blade in. Yeah, okay, but by that same logic, it doesn't need to be a sword blade, it could be any kind of lance-shaped object, uh, and it will do the job. Uh, So to me, very silly. And then when you take it to the logical extremes, well, what's it actually going to hit with this weapon? Almost all the other titans are smaller and faster and more agile than this. They have more practical close combat weapons, and uh, frankly, the weaponry that this is upgraded with is quite quite a bit worse than um, the other titans around it. Uh, it does look like it has some sort of Gatling blaster going on on top of the carapace, but that is going to have some really limited uh, firing arcs. It's not going to be able to fire down, uh, being a carapace weapon, and mounted so high up in the carapace, this this thing is not hitting anything that is shorter than this Titan, with those weapons the way they are currently aimed in the uh, carapace. Oh, I should know, I have a standard Warmaster Titan, the thing is huge, and the carapace really does block its line of sight for... The missile launcher up there, at least missiles curve uh, and can aim towards their targets. Uh, macro Gatling blasters and such don't have that luxury. Uh, the Inferno cannons in the arms are comical, even on the regular Warmaster. It's why I didn't put them on mine. So really, this thing is armed with the Laz cannon in the shin and a couple of battle cannons sticking out of the shoulders, and that's its real offensive output, which is so bizarre. And when it comes to some of the smaller units, uh, any vehicles in the game, any small titans like the Warhound or Questorius Knights, they are so short, this thing can't actually reach down and hit them with its arms, which means they're going to have a field day with it. Uh, And any other titans, such as Reavers and Warlords, are going to be able to shoot this thing for miles uh, before it can actually reach them and actually employ its combat weapons, and like I said, it lacks the ranged weapons to affect them. Melee weapons work really well on smaller titans as a force multiplier. They're small, they can get up close to their target and give them the old backstab, hit them in a a vital hydraulic line in the leg, something like that, take them down. You know, a Reaver or a Warlord potentially has the ability to walk up and uh, slug another titan to the face, rip its head clean off and take out the whole Princeps and crew. Sure, potential is there. And so for me, the suspension of disbelief is broken. Um... Well, exists, I should say, uh, is not broken. Whereas for this thing, what the hell is it going to do? Is it going to run up very, very slowly because of its mass? Uh, This is not a fast Titan on the tabletop. It is so tall and uh, it's very ponderous. It's going to, what, slowly walk up and then attack its enemies? I mean, there is a place for melee weaponry in 40k. And sure, this thing could attack a fortification or something with that giant saw, but wouldn't it be more advantageous, especially for a Titan that is remarked upon as being an incredible fire platform, to actually be armed with weapons that make it an incredible fire platform? Quake cannons in the arms, like some kind of giant macro cannon arm, something like that, where this thing can just walk up, it has an excellent line of sight, and it can just dump shells all day long into fortifications, into walls, things like that seems like a far more effective use of this titan than trying to batter them into submission. Because by the same token as saying that, hey, because of the mass of this thing, that chainsaw is going to be effective, well, by the same token, the mass of this thing swinging that chainsaw is probably going to shear all the teeth and snap the chain and destroy the arm itself on its first swing just from the amount of force that it can apply on its own arm. That's where the suspension of disbelief comes in. The weapon is simply too small, too spindly for the mass of the creature that's wielding it. And it'd be like giving Superman a butter knife. Uh, It's just ridiculous. And that's the key. When something in 40k steps just that little bit too far, it's not that uh, the concept is crazy. Melee titans are a thing. But there is the step too far. 
And I think that's the point that this thing has reached. Is it a bad model? No, it looks good. It is a good looking model, despite the, the limitations of practicality. And uh, I wouldn't hate to have one in my own collection, but I definitely wouldn't rush out to get it. And then what are the weapons? Are they plastic upgrades? Are they resin upgrades? We don't yet know. Uh, if they are plastic upgrades, are these going to be on a sprue or is this going to be a whole new kit for this one model? They've pulled that crap before, haven't they? Uh, and those of us who've already got one assembled, well, it's going to be very hard to change out that torso cannon on top. So good luck changing this one out and magnetizing it anytime soon. Kind of like what they do with the Nemesis Warbringer, how they bought out the gun but no platform for the gun. Uh, very, very poor form on their behalf. So a bit of a strange one there. Um, but as I said, it's not an ugly model. It's an impractical model uh, within the universe of the game. Okay, It doesn't apply to the physics of its own universe. In its own universe, Titans can walk around uh, without sinking into the ground under their enormous weight where thousands of tons on such a small platform as its feet should, in theory, not work. Uh, actually, in reality, it wouldn't work. But in the game's physics, it does. For whatever reason, you know, the alloys it's made of, who knows? They've found a way. But the physics behind the weapons, those are very real physics. Uh, and we can look at the rest of the game system to understand how they work. And this one doesn't work. Therefore, it breaks my suspension of disbelief. Therefore, it is not a good kit. Now, what would I do different? That's the question. That's where the money lies. So, if this was going to be a siege unit, there are probably two different things you could do with it. One is that initial idea I had, which is like big macro cannons or quake cannons hanging from the arms. Um, like some kind of giant thud gun or quad mortar would be pretty cool, hanging from under the arms. Uh, where this thing can just demolish walls with these howitzer shells. Cool, that could work. If you want to have a dedicated melee unit, though, uh, it doesn't need this weird termite charybdis Dreadclaw sort of looking power fist hand, uh, although it is the better looking of the two weapons, and it doesn't need a giant chainsword. Those weapons work best on smaller units like knights and especially on dreadnoughts. No, what this thing needs is something like a lance type weapon, like the um, Imperial Knights have, where the lance itself is an extendable boom, so uh, which can change its center of mass as the unit charges. That's one option. Or a big wrecking ball, a big long set of chains like a flail that hangs down from the arm and it drags a large ball along. Or even a third option, some sort of retractable pod with a massive explosive mounted on the end of it. Kind of like uh, the polystyrene we'd strap things like Comp B and C4 to in Special Forces units to blow out windows and doors. You could have an extendable boom. This thing walks up to wall, extends it out, Boom, blows a massive hole in the wall, and then the guns on it lay waste to what's on the other side. Those are all viable ways of achieving the same concept. I'm not going to say it's not cool to have combat weapons on a Titan like this, but it's the impracticality of them on this specific Titan, laid out in this specific way with things like the chainsaw that doesn't apply to laws of physics, where it's got a guard, but the guard just gets in its own way. Um, some people have likened it to something like a gut hook on a knife. The problem is it's not a gut hook. It's a big blunt object. Uh, it's like moving the tang, uh, not the tang, the, the cross guard of a sword right up to near the tip of the sword. Uh, yeah, you have a lot of blade behind it, but that's not going to help you when you thrust into the enemy and it only gets a couple of inches in and stops because it's butted out in its own cross guard. That's the practicality problem with that chain sword. So... That's it. Uh, I don't like it. And you know what? I'm under no obligation to like it. Uh, nor are you. And if you do like it, there is nothing wrong with that. I can't take that away from you, nor would I dream of it. But don't turn around to me and tell me that I have to like Games Workshop's products or that it's negative not to. That's not how consumerism works. I am not obligated to like anything. If I do like something, great. I can do business with Games Workshop, perform a transaction, and buy the product. If I don't like it, I'm under no requirement to do so. That's it. That's the relationship. Anyway, if you can't grasp that concept, and you feel like having a go at me, please do so in the comments below. I'm sure I will treat you like the mature adult you clearly are. Anyway, back with the Outer Circle. 
I'll see you all on the next one.